Today, I'll walk through the vocal mix to this song. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. I spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my patience is gone. I guess I'm wrong to be more like you, my younger self. This song is Odd Reason by the band Sick Passenger and if you want to hear this in full, I'll put the link in the description. So these are great pop punk vocals with a lot of atmosphere to really fit the style of the song, so let's get into it. So with this lead vocal chain and many of the lead vocal chains that I use, I split them into two halves. The first half is supposed to emulate hardware on an input chain, so as if there was compression and sometimes preamp saturation on the way in. I will also control the vocal a bit with things like DS's and dynamic EQ so that when we actually start mixing it's already even and we have a good bass and we can actually be creative and get the sound that we want rather than fix problems from that point onwards. So as you can see here on this lead vocal track we've got the auto-tune running but this will be this is manual auto-tune this isn't just having auto-tune running and the tuning was as you can see actually here at this point in the song there's not anything happening it was only the odd note here and there it was very light it wanted, the band wanted to keep it natural and I agree that was definitely best for this song. So first up here is the FG Stress, which is an emulation of the Distressor plugin. And this is part of the input chain I was talking about. So before we get to mixing, this is like the compressor on the way in. So it's not been pushed too hard. This is just to get a decent level and sort of bring out the good bits of the Distressor itself. So six to one ratio here. Sometimes I'll use four to one on vocals, but this one six to one felt best. Slow-ish attack, so we can obviously be a lot slower, but we're going for eight here and then three on the release. So you can go a lot harder with that with a slower release and a faster attack, but in this instance, like I said, I didn't want to shake the sound too much at this point, so I wanted to get a decent level to work from. And these two aren't doing anything, the trimmer and the revival. The S's were quite heavy on the raw tracks, so that's why we've got a de -esser as part of the input chain too, because I want to be able to EQ and compress later on without having S's jumping out and sort of influencing the decisions that I would make. And then into this linear multiband or linear phase multiband compressor from Waves, which I use a lot on vocals. And if you've seen my other videos, you've probably seen this too. The trick with this here is this range part. So you see that blue area here? That's that's effectively like the ratio. How much is it, is it going to pull the vocal down? So I whack that all the way up. And then I bring this master down until it's touching the meters. I don't often go too far. This one we've gone a little bit further than where it's just touching. But what this does is it keeps everything sounding really smooth and even. And if the vocal sounds a bit boxy, then this is a great way because it will always hit this sort of mid-range area first. And it will bring them down, which actually gives you a brighter vocal to start with. Okay, so into the mixing. So this is where we're at now with just the input chain on, no mixing. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. I spend every day in the rear view with no... Yeah, nice even vocal there. You see, it's compressed well. There's nothing jumping out too much. It sounds a little harsh and maybe lacking a little bit of mid-range. Now, I know that we controlled the mid-range with the linear, with the Lin MB, but we want control over that mid-range so I want to now push back what I think is missing rather than having the whole mid-range just making it sound boxy so then cue this EQ this is the SSL channel from Waves an ancient plugin really but it's still what I prefer to use I think because I know it so well I always feel like I have to defend this plugin because I use it on everything but I see a lot of uh, pro mixers using it too so high pass filter here set to 95 in this case this is always a case a song by song basis never really feel like I'm putting it in the same area twice. I like doing this for air. This is a, an 8K shelf because the bell isn't engaged. And that is only a decibel, but it does quite a lot just to open the lid on the vocals and get the brightness to what you'd expect to hear with this kind of music. But the important thing, I think, with this vocal in particular, and I do find myself doing this more and more, especially with pop punk singers, is pushing these mids back into it. So here we have 1.5K, slightly narrow Q and pushing it with two decibels. So if I play this vocal again, I'll try and show, I'll exaggerate it so I can show what area I'm pushing back. And hopefully you'll hear the importance of this kind of area on, on certain vocalists where it's not, you know, if it was soft music where people could be closer to the mic and more intimate, you maybe wouldn't need this push. But where it's people singing at the top of their lungs, essentially, this kind of helps make the vocal more sort of rich and full. For some odd reason, the good ones are I spend every day in the rear view 
With no idea why my patience is gone Guess I'm wrong to be more like you yeah, so hopefully you heard there. Obviously, you wouldn't you wouldn't cut that frequency range. But when I pulled it back, the vocal disappeared and it got very thin. When I brought this back, although it wasn't making it thick and boxy because it's not like a low end boost, it really brought the vocal forward and placed it into the mix. It allows us to make sure the vocal sits well and is heard and isn't harsh and too bright, which is a common problem when you're trying to push the vocal to be heard over all the guitars and everything like that. So if you can find a nice mid range point, you can really help your vocals come through sit nicely let's hear this whole eq off and on because we've also got a shelf that we've that we've put on here too so i'll bypass the whole thing for some reason the good ones are much worse i spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my patience is gone guess i'm wrong to be more yeah, so it gets that vocal heard and sitting in a nice place. Tiny bit of brightness, but it's quite subtle. There's also a little bit of compression happening here in the dynamic section of this plugin, but it's it's only really touching this three here. So now we're gonna compress the vocal, get it to sit in terms of balance a little bit better too, and then bring out some character and energy. So that's where this compressor comes from here, the CLA76. I love using the, or any kind of 1176 style compressor for vocals because I like what it does with the transients, especially the blue stripe one. I feel like it really gets the vocal to jump out at you. So yeah, that's why we've got the release on the fastest setting we can. And then we've pulled the attack back to just, just getting some transient in, but nothing too crazy because it's, it's, it's a fast compressor, definitely. So let's hear this off and on. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. I spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my patience is gone. Guess I'm wrong to be more like you, my younger self who stood so. Yes, you can hear it really jumping out. We're getting a lot of energy and attitude out of it. We are going to relax it and soften it up too, but I like to make sure that our vocal has energy. I don't want it to sound a little dull, especially then when you hear other songs in this genre, you, you want it to stand up against them, right? So Pro Q3 now. This is just more frequencies that jump out. So we've got here... 5k and and just under 9k because it's still sounding a little harsh in those areas but only at certain points which is why they're dynamic and then this uh this here at 600 hertz is actually working in the opposite direction to uh, accentuate that kind of area too to fill that out a bit more also okay so with that eq and compression there's another deesser here so it might seem strange to use a deesser twice sometimes i like to stack the deessers if it has to do if you know if one DS was doing too much, it would sound a little bit or uh, harsh and horrible, and those S's would sound weird. The first one was just to make sure we had a decent starting point. So this effectively is the first mixing DSA, if that makes sense. And then now we're going to start softening this vocal up, warming it up, and giving it some saturation, give it a bit of analog feel to it, so it doesn't sound so digital. And that's with this warm tape here. It's it's not doing too much. It's only at sixteen percent. You know, saturation can build up quite a lot in a mix. So definitely always be conservative unless you're going for like a obviously saturated sound and now our second compressor which is the la2a this is the one from uad so we've controlled a bit more of the frequency spectrum with the dsing and that pro q3 we've given it a bit of saturation and now we're giving it another level of compression so let's hear it now for some odd reason the good ones are much worse i spend every day in the rear view with no yeah, so we're bringing it under control a lot more and we've got the energy that we want in it without it sounding too abrasive. And now we've followed up with a soothe. We're still getting a bit of that harshness around that sort of upper mid-range area. In fact, this started off as a clean up a little vocal harshness preset, as you can see up there. Then we're bringing it down by two decibels because this would have been a later in the game. You know, once I started checking the mix, I realized, yeah, these vocals are hot. So bring them down slightly there. And then another soothe. And that's the last little stage of DSing here. This invisible DSer can be set to a point where you don't even know it's happening. Without it, the S's are sort of jumping out. With it, you can't necessarily tell it's being DS if you've set it right. Sometimes you've got to be a little harder with it and you can tell a little bit, but this is essential for uh, just the nature of some singers and some microphones. Okay, so let's hear that with the uh, chain fully engaged. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. 
Yeah, that made a crazy amount of difference. Let's take off those tooth soothes and obviously we, the, the two decibel drop in gain. We'll hear how we've got that to sit so much nicer now. The harshness is under control. Those extra S's are under control and it's not too loud. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. Right, and then we'll hear those last three plugins. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of difference. So just quickly, if you like what you heard and you want me to mix your next release, then head over to my website, terrybeckleyrecording.com and send me a message via the contact form. I will get back to you. The link is in the description. It really sits it where it's supposed to be. And yes, I know you're probably thinking, why is you need a gain plug and you could just pull the gain down on any of those plugins. But this is just so that you try it out, you put it on there, and then you can just take it off quickly without having to remember what you did and undo it. That's why it's on the gain plugin. Okay, so there's a send here to a Vox delay. And we are DSing what the signal that's going into the delay because we don't want that S to be what's jumping out. You know, when you get you, sometimes it's it's distracting because that delay has a really hard S in it. You don't want it to be that obvious. It needs to be more of a texture. So one of my favorite delays, a Manny Marroquin delay from Waves, set to a, a quarter note here with the verb on two. Like I said in the intro, these are atmospheric vocals because it's an atmospheric song. It's got that anthemic feel to it. So we want to make sure that's consistent throughout all of the uh, all of the instruments. And you'll see that was consistent with the drums too. And if you want to see how I mix those, put the link to that video in the description. So after the delay, we've then controlling the sort of lower part of there, the, the lower mids to make sure that they're not building up and mudging up the vocal. And a slight bump in the mids, that same sort of area that we had with the, uh, the EQ on the main vocal. And then we're making them a bit brighter too. Rolling off at 12K, but making them a bit brighter. Now you just have to play around with the delay and make sure it's sitting where you want to sit it, whether you want to make it lo-fi, whether you want to pull the mids out, push the mids and pull the highs down to get it to sit behind the vocal. I always find that if you just slap the delay on, get the timing right, but don't actually EQ it and shape it further, it can stick out at weird points and, and sound a little amateur. So let's hear that with the delay. For some odd reason, the good ones aren't much worse. Yeah, so that delay is sitting in a nice place that fits the ambience of the song. So I always like to layer vocals, and although this isn't my song, I'm glad that they sent me layers, the band, because I always think, especially a chorus, you need that kind of extra layer of vocals in there to get it to stand out from the rest of the song and to be a bit more interesting to listen to. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. Is gone. I guess I long to be more like you, my younger self who stood so strong. So it's subtle, but it's tucked in there. The mixing will be very similar to the lead vocal. You know, we, we'll compress on the way in, well, actually we limit on the way in, whereas this, I wanted this to stay exactly where it was, as it's a vocal layer. So that's why we're limiting on the way in. Now that we've layered the vocal up, we don't. I don't want any of these higher parts to build up in any sort of way, because we, we worked quite hard to get them under control in the lead vocal. So that's why you've got all these dynamic cuts here and a big one here. I don't really want any of this top end to be too clear on the vocal layer. And I don't want any mid build up, of course, either. So that's why we've, we've done that. And then this is another way to make sure that the frequencies aren't jumping out in any way. And we've just got the flat start preset from Soothe, and we're just making sure that we try and keep the vocal as flat as possible. So nothing jumps out anyway. This is a layer. I want the layer to just be a sonic addition to it. I don't want it to take any focus or anything like that. So a bit of preamp saturation there where we've pushed the input a little bit. So we're pushing it more into the following vocal chain. Some compression here, 1176 again. Slow attack, fast release there. And then into the DSer again, because even though we've even though I've done a lot to control those like harsher frequencies, can't have anything jumping out. And then back to this SSL channel here. And interestingly, look at this. This is a low pass filter set of 5K. So the slopes are gentle in this plugin. They're very gentle, but anything above that really is just stuff I don't need for a layered vocal. And it's just going to get in the way and cause problems. If you don't want your lead to be an obvious lead, you want it to sonically thicken up what we've got. 
then do you need any of that really high air and stuff? Because you've already got that from the first one and it's just going to, they're going to merge together and, and cause you kind of problems. I uh, never used to do this. I used to fight it and I used to try and tuck it in in other ways. And then I saw a pro mixer do this and I thought, why haven't I been doing this for years? This, <laughs> this makes way, way more sense. I don't need that extra information that's up there. And with the gentleness of these slopes, then you're not going to be losing everything above 5K. It's going to be a gradual drop off. So let's just listen to this with the... Uh, with that low pass on so you can sort of get a feel for what I'm doing. You know, you'd never hear this in solo ever, or the listener never would. I spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my... Yeah, see, it's, we, we are focusing on thickening here. So that's why it sounds like a dull vocal. We don't want to overhype this. And then female full range. I know it's not a female singer, but we want to control the higher potentially more harsh areas of the vocal which is why we've got this running here it's really working to, to tuck this under and not cause us any harshness or any problems with that another deesser here and this is a really cool thing i like to do with vocal doubles when the song calls for it and if you were listening to emo back in the day you probably would have heard something to this effect let me play you what this does because it's kind of hard to explain without hearing it I spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my patience is gone. Guess I... Yeah, right? It sounds weird by itself, but um, it really adds a cool thickening feel. I know it's quite chorusy, obviously, where you've got the varying speed here. That's that's what causes that effect. But it, it's something I've heard, I heard brought out quite a lot in a certain sort of subgenre of emo back in the day. And I always like to bring it back. I think it sounds cool. Let me, let me play it together with the lead vocal and I'll bring the double up so you can hear how it plays with that main vocal. I spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my patience is gone. I guess I long to be more like you, my younger self who stood so strong. Hopefully you heard when I pushed that volume up, you could hear how cool that chorusing sound, how it, it differentiates itself from the main vocal. And it, I just love how it sounds. And maybe it's the nostalgia playing a part for me, but uh, I try and work this in when I can. Okay, so another compressor, keeping it more under control, tucking it back, more harsh. More, I'm worried about it really building up in these areas. And, and as you go through and do more mixing with the vocal bus and whatnot, these things start to build up. So that's why we've got a lot of work has been done to make sure that the harshness doesn't build up. And then followed off with a, another linear MB to ensure that sort of smoothness. I'm sure you heard some cool harmonies happening too. And I definitely wanted the harmonies to be loud. When I when I heard the song with the harmonies in, I thought, yeah, we want to bring them out. They sound cool. And I think there'll be a really good extra dimension to the chorus. Cool. So Pro Q3 to start. This is copied over from the last one because again, we don't want that harshness to build up. And then compressing. We're not limiting like we did the doubles. We want these to be heard a bit more. So we're going to compress these so they can still have their own space and, and bit of movement. And again, same as before, controlling anything that might pop out, making sure it's nice and flat. Saturation, same as before. And then compression, same as before. But we haven't done as much in terms of making sure we're forcing this behind the lead vocal because we do want this to be heard a little bit more. It's not just thickening up, you know, it's adding an extra layer. Again, we don't want the um, necessarily the super high stuff, but we want the harmony to be heard. You see, we've done a similar thing here with this SSL channel, but the low pass is at 8K instead of 5 because I still want presence to this. I just don't want any of that really high sort of stuff to be uh, to be causing us a problem. And then a shelf at 6K, a similar sort of mid boost to the main vocal, which we didn't have in the double. And again, that's because this is still an element that you want to be heard. It's interesting that sometimes you can almost copy and paste your mix settings from one vocal track to another, but each one here has had to be mixed differently because everything brought something different to the table in terms of vocals for this chorus. And then finished off with the LA-2A in limiter mode. Okay, so let's look at these sends. First is Vox Verb. Now we didn't have the lead vocal going to it because with all of the atmospheric stuff that's happening, you know, there's a delay there. You don't want to make it, or I don't want to make it too washy for this song, but I've made sure that the other vocals do have some ambience in terms of reverb. So this is just the Valhalla room and it's the golden plate preset there. Not sure if I mess with any of this stuff, but uh, sometimes I'll make sure that the decay is short enough or long enough that it fills the space without getting in the way of the next parts of the vocal. Then the same delay that the lead vocal was going to. This I believe was set to nothing that comes in later on in the song. 
Then we've got this bridge gang vocal here, which there's some cool vocal stuff that happens later on in the song where you needed to sound like it was a lot of, you know, a, a lot of vocals happening. I thought it was cool to put a bit of this on the harmonies too. And then a, again, an, another reverb here, which is sort of panning left and right with this um, pan man. If you've seen the guitar video, there there's an auto panning effect that's happening. So I kind of wanted to bring that throughout the song. So got it in this harmony reverb too. You know, it's just subtle sort of peppering it in there. But it also happens in the strings that happen later on in the song. So well, when I get to the sort of production element of this, uh, you'll, you'll be able to hear that too. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for when that video uh, gets uploaded. But let's hear all three now. I'll do it in solo so you can hear what the harmonies are bringing. For some odd reason, the good ones are much worse. Yes, yeah, so you can really hear that panning reverb there. I just thought that was really cool because the guitars are doing it too. And I just thought that it's kind of a, like a theme of this song. So it'd be cool to stick it in some places and like, you know find some areas that I could bring that in. I thought that was quite a cool, quite a cool vibe there. Harmony 2 is just another layer of harmonies, but we've got the exact same stuff happening there. So let, let's play you this. I spend every day in the rear view with no idea why my patience is gone. I guess I long to be more like you, my younger self who stood so strong yeah it's quite a wall of vocals and uh, i do like it where the harmonies are not strict doubles of each other you'll notice the panning i would often have a, a harmony doubled and have it go left and right you know hard left and right on the panning but these aren't strict doubles so I felt like I didn't want everything down the middle, but I also didn't want to separate it all too much because I'm losing that sort of wall of vocals that I was going for. But I just want to show you what I did do. You see how they're slightly panned evenly here, left and right, but only a little bit. But there is a part here in the song where it's not only happening in one of the harmony tracks. So what I did there, if we go to the automation, is brought that central, that bit there. So we have the stereo effect, but then that there is central and it's, and, it, and it's lining up with the doubles in the main. So a bit of detail that I uh, wanted to share. So in terms of the main vocal sound, that's pretty much it. But there is a pretty cool lo-fi vocal that happens at various parts of the song and it leads into this chorus here. Let's unmute those, bring them in. You gotta give points to the uh, arrangement and songwriting skills here because this was a really good idea. I really liked that. You know, it comes down to just the guitar. You thin these vocals out with the lo-fi effect and then there's that riser and sub drop that happens which just really, really works for that chorus. This is on vocal, so let's go through that sound quickly. By itself, we've got two layers. They are the same thing copied over to do different tracks because I did a bit of parallel processing here. This is how they sound by themselves. I hide from the memories, not the bad, but the good. So the reason for the parallel is that I love the, on this plugin, there is a preset CLA filter vox, but it's so lo-fied out that sometimes it can be a little bit too thin and sort of telephonic. So I lay it in a sort of less lo-fi version as well to give it a bit more it's still a lead vocal effectively at this point even if it is an fx vocal here so gain reduction which is a mega aggressive compressor but can be used really it's really cool for certain things and like stuff like this and then into this telefy plugin here from um, black salt audio their plugins have been coming out recently and i gotta say i'm really enjoying them so we've got a 22% here, which it, it, you, you can sort of tell from these little lines here that it's sort of how filtered the sound is. And then you can push it, I guess you're kind of tilting it either high or low. And that can be really useful because with the, um, the CLA preset I was talking about, if I wanted to shift it lower or higher, depending on what effect I was going for, it would require other plugins and other processing. So if it was just the CLA vocal, it would sound like this. Yeah, it's a bit too pushed back and stripped out for me. So we've got the other one by itself, the uh, Telefy and the Game Reduction. I hide from the memories, not the bad, but the good. Yeah, so that's why you need both of them. So if you want to see how the guitars were mixed, then check out this video here. If you want to see how the drums are mixed, I've stuck that in the description, so you can check that out too. And if you want to see all kinds of videos on mixing and recording emo and pop punk music, then check out my channel because there's a few there and I'm building them up as much as I can. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.